Hey guys, welcome back to The Modeling Edge. I am Nick, and hopefully you've been seeing and enjoying the miniature painting series I'm putting together, which is just all my different techniques and most frequently asked questions on miniature painting. Today I decided to switch gears from more hammer back to, or over to D&D rather, because I haven't featured it before, but it is what I primarily do for commissions. Now this is not my own painting, obviously I'm doing this for customers, but it is what I do the most of. And I have two miniatures here to represent two different styles of painting, both of which we did not see with the Warhammer stuff. One is going to be how I quickly paint these guys in about an hour or two using only dry brushing and some detail painting for my clients. And then this one is going to be a more involved brush painting, how to brush paint the entirety of the miniature. So if that's interesting, stay tuned for that video, or if you want to see just how to paint D&D miniatures quick for your campaigns, stay tuned. Or don't just stay tuned, just watch the video. <laughs> Sorry. Now, the reason they're all black, these are WizKid miniatures, or the normal WizKid miniatures, uh, which are primed in Vallejo Gray. Uh, if you watched my airbrushing video, I explained a little bit there. I always prime these, and I did it with the airbrush, and you want to see how I did that if you have an airbrush go check out the anodized marine tutorial. But the reason for that is Vallejo is a latex-based acrylic, and so it gets waxy when it dries over time. And they are just dunking their miniatures in it. They're not spraying it on or anything, they're just like dipping it almost. It is so thick, not only does it destroy a lot of detail, but when it hardens, it becomes like a rubber. So instead of making it easier for new miniature painters to get paint on and continue on, it's uh, almost impossible that I find for it to hold any color, which is terrible for new guys because the point of a primer is supposed to make that a little bit easier. So I recommend at the very least rebasing them when I do my full brush ones, although I had the airbrush out for him, so I just airbrushed her as well. I do rebase the whole thing in black anyway, regardless, because it just leaves a coarse new fresh layer of paint that makes it easier for everything to stick. Now, another option would be to strip them, but I found this to be a little bit easier. So, she will be in a second video, but for now, this guy is called a bear bug. And as you can see, the detail comes out a little bit better under the black, but a lot of it's been already wiped away. And so, the first thing you want to do whenever approaching a miniature by just dry brushing, because I'm literally just going to dry brush them with some detail painting, is you're going to want to pick out color groups. Now, I find a really helpful thing with WizKid miniatures, and the reason for that is I don't play D&D, &D, so I don't know any of these creatures off the top of my head, is to keep the backing card. And so, for the most part, he's going to be brown, which is fine, because I paint a lot of brown minis, with leather armor, for the most part. And so, I have all my colors laid out. I'm going to dry brush him in a light beige metal. I'm going to dry brush all of his armor in my leather mixture and beige here and all that. So camo black, the German camo black, I mean camo black, camo brown is gonna be our base coat, but we're going to apply it as a dry brush instead of a traditional base coat. And then start drying brushing everything over it and then we'll do some gold details and silver details and all of that. So let's get started. So dry brushing is a technique I've explained in a couple of my other videos already, but flat tip brush, you're going to rub most of the paint off of it, and you're going to brush it at an angle, do a fingernail test to make sure that everything's okay. And since this is going to be our base coat color camo brown, we're just going to pretty much go over everything with it at an angle and see what it can pick out. And from there we will start adding our different colors. For this technique, dry brush or er, a black base coat is crucial because it provides all the shadows needed. to really accentuate those highlights. Thank you. 
So as you can see, we're already starting to get some color down on him. And so I'm going to do that for the rest of the miniature. So hopefully the light picks up on it, but you can start to see all these little details popping out from just that base coat dry brush, as well as some textures on the arms, the hair. And now we're going to start doing the same process, but with our different colors. So since we decided that the armor is going to be mostly leather, I use a mahogany color. Instead of an actual leather brown, I just like the way the mahogany looks. Sometimes I would mix it with my other brown just to soften it up a little bit and not make it so red. But it is one of my favorite leather colors. And so again, we are just going to dry brush. But this time, and the more we do it over the miniature, the more focused your dry brushing has to get. So for example, we are just going to be dry brushing the back here. And we're going to do our best to keep the leather color to just on the back and on the shoulders. So we don't want to get it on the hair. And now with dry brushing, it's not as precise as other paint techniques. So if you do get it on the hair and stuff, you can always course correct later. You can always dry brush more paint on just to build that color up a little bit nicer. Another thing that we're going to try and get leather on is the belt. Oh. That's what I mean. It's okay if you get paint elsewhere, but just try to focus it where it's needed. That's why I would recommend getting a very small dry brush. Really helps out. Again, just like on the back, we're going to try to focus this just to the chest armor. And dry brushing is achieved by just multiple passes, you know, building up that color slowly but surely. And just taking your time with it. For example, I will be doing a second coat now on the shoulder pads and the armor to kind of make it a little bit warmer. As you can see, it's starting to add nice red tones on the highlights while still leaving the shadows where we want them. And if you saw my D&D tutorial, you know how I paint my marine separately. Well, all D&D miniatures come together, so pre-built, pre-assembled, and pre-painted as it were so it makes it a little bit tricky but essentially that is it so that's our second color down and so we are almost done with this thing's overall color palette before we go to dry brushing i mean before we go to detail painting we're dry brushing right now so to continue with the highlights what we're going to do is hopefully this will pick up on the pants and other stuff where we did mostly camo brown We've mixed some beige with our camo brown. We're just going to keep repeating the process. Lightening up certain areas and details. Adding some extra depth. This is where things start to separate. So, for example, I'm not going to do this over the entire legs. I'm going to leave that mostly camo brown. And this lighter color is going to stay on the pants.
This is going to start blending those shadows together with the highlights, making everything more coherent. Just a little bit. You can always add more paint to your brush. And so now the pants are a little bit more defined and they catch the highlights pretty well. So next we're going to do pure beige on the parts of his skin. And again, just like we've been doing, just real light, real controlled. So his face does have camo brown on it already. And the reason for that is because we want to blend the shadows eventually. Or that's what we're doing now is blending everything. And we didn't want it to just go straight from black to beige. That would look a little too stark of a contrast. Make it look a little fake. Now, of course, you can do that if you so desire. There's nothing wrong with that. Some people are a big fan of extreme shadows. You can make it whatever you want. And so, just like you saw with my detail painting video on the Space Marine, or if you haven't checked that out, please do. This is very different from how I paint my Marines. I'm relying so heavily on dry brushing. And this is just what I do for my $10 or so commissions. That's because I need it to be done quickly. And I want to keep the price down. But yeah, so now his face has some skin detail on it. We're going to probably do another coat of beige, tie that up, and we'll be doing the hands the same way. Alrighty, so again, just mixing some color palettes, darkened the parts of his shoes and his boots, his gauntlets. I mixed white and really lightened up the color for his fur to make that stand out even more. And now we're just going to dry brush his weapons and so I'll be using chrome for this and this is going to be a real delicate dry brush you don't need too much paint to do this I'm doing something super tiny like this I tried to just get paint on a little bit of the brush and we're just going to try and dry brush from the edges down you do want some paint in the middle, but not a lot, just because you're not trying to paint anything yet. We're just trying to pick out some details. Now at this stage, dry brushing is gonna become a little bit difficult, just because the size of the pieces we're dry brushing and their close proximity to already painted parts of the mini. Oh, my bad, he wasn't even on screen that whole time. But there's the knife. And then I'll be using lead belcher to dry brush his cleaving weapon, the super big weapon he's got here and these since it's black on black that's also why you want to be really careful around these they're metallic on black we're just going to try and accentuate as much as possible but not going in any specific direction
Another thing that makes dry brushing a little bit difficult is since you're doing dry paint, it is important to clean your brush between like almost every color, and I just did not do that today. So the blade is a little bit brown now just because of the previous colors you were doing. And so there you go. That is the dry brush for the weapons and also the last dry brush. Now we've expended our resources and our ability to dry brush any further just because the things are so close. Ugh. They're in such close proximity to each other and so small that we're going to have to start detail painting. But at this point, that's what he looks like, and the detail painting is going to get real quick. So for detail painting, it's going to be the same as my other video, although less intense. So still using the key to this is a simple color palette. And of course, color palettes can be a lot simpler than this. Right now, all of my interesting details, like these little runes on his belt, I'm going to be using Retributor Gold. And the reason for that is there's a lot of gold motifs on just WizKids painted miniature, which is the only reference I have for this. And so I thought I'd keep that going and just paint some gold. So again, real simple, nothing too crazy. We're just trying to cover the tops of these dots here in gold. And then this little detail up here. And to keep control, again, just like you're dry brushing, only this time it's controlled and you have a lot more paint, so be even more cautious. But we're still just going to use the edges of our brush, not the tips. The tips are loaded with paint. So if you just go and try to paint everything with the tip of the brush, you could overload the surface or vice versa, paint also dries on the tip and you might not get any paint and overcompensate and wreck your mini. So, there's that gold ring. Also, this little detail in here was gold, as was this one. I think bands on his wrist, yeah. Also gold. If you're doing a miniature like me, you don't know what colors to make something and you don't want to get too creative which, again, I'm not encouraging that, obviously be creative. But for D&D, &D, in my case, I don't know enough to know what would look right on the gaming table. So when I do my Warhammer miniatures, and I do a bunch of weird and crazy things, I know what I'm going for. I have an idea of what's going to look at least coherent and legible to the eye in that setting. I don't really have that frame of reference for D&D, &D, and so I'm going pretty heavy off my references for most of my minis, even in my commissions. But obviously you don't have to. You can paint this any way you want. This is just how they look to me on the Woods Kid box.
then they converge down in here. There's also some gold on his shoulder pads. I'm not really sure what is gold and what's not. And so we're just gonna leave it for now. I have no idea if that's also supposed to be armored or what. But yeah, gold is done. Actually, I might dry brush some gold on those pads and see how it goes. Alrighty, so since now all the painting on the top part of the body is done, what we're going to be doing next is one of my favorite parts of figure painting and also one of the most intimidating, and that is painting the face. And so just like my marine video, we take a little toothpick. And we're just going to very gently apply some white. Not too much. We don't want to... completely flood the space. You just want it to be obvious that there are eyes there. And to break them up from the rest of the mini. Now for some, you can add pupils if you wish, things like that. I do it depending on the miniature. Um, but this guy here, again, the reference didn't have any pupils, so I'm just going to try. And you're slowly just going to build up the shape of the eye. Again, washes will help with that. But there's the face pretty much done. There's eyes. And then for teeth, well, I am going to use white. You're going to only really do the tips. And you're going to apply it pretty thin, just like a, uh, a dry brush. The reason for that is we want to change the color inside the mouth to draw attention to these teeth. But we don't necessarily need to create the illusion that this guy is, you know, hygienically conscious about his teeth. Although you could, I don't know. Up to you, up to you. It's just how I'm going to do it. We're going to put a brown wash in there too to tone down that white. And just make everything blend a little bit more. And I think he has teeth on the bottom. Like all around here. And it's all kind of molded together. And it's hard to tell. Uh, yeah, never mind. On my reference, those are also teeth. So, same type of deal. I'm going to be a little bit more careful this time. As you can see, I'm getting caught up on the teeth. The edge highlighting, dry brushing, going real light in some areas and just moving it around. With acrylic paints, as far as I know, I can only get it to work for really nice sculpted detail. Since there is no nice sculpted detail on the bottom jawline, it's not going to work real well. But if you had an oil paint, or if you were doing a wet blend of this instead of just doing dry paint on dry paint, that would have been a little bit easier to achieve. I'm 
there's the base. And now the rest is gonna be all preference, but real simple. I'm gonna walk you through what I'm going to do, but I'm not gonna necessarily film the whole thing. So, on his loincloth here, they have blue. I think I'm gonna do an orange, just because I have orange readily available. We're going to paint the hilt of this blade and the hilt of this cleaver. You don't necessarily have to because they've been defined by dry brushing, but I like to do that. And that's going to be it. He's going to be done once I get all those details on. And then we're going to do some washes and finish the mini. Okay, so got the hilt painted on both weapons and the cloth. There's the gold in the armor, his face, everything's a little bit nicer detail now the final stage of all of my dnd commissions is washes just like my warhammer stuff now i like my warhammer stuff while this is going to be focused it's going to be applied a little bit more liberally than normal and it does not have to be everywhere because it is not a filter this is just to cover some areas that we painted the reason it doesn't have to be everywhere is because the dry brushing breaks up a lot of stuff. But for things like inside this armor, on the shoulder, it'll help parse out those details a little bit more. And it makes everything a tad bit darker. Which I'm not sure if that's really something you want to do, but you could. Finds the hair a little bit better. The fur. I'm gonna put it on his arm there so you can see that armor wrap or canvas wrap rather. And for areas where the dry brushing really didn't do too too much stuff gonna apply washes in there and so like I said it's to tone everything down tie it together although I find that the Agrax earth shade is super aggressive and will pull paint off at times for no reason at all it's supposed to be an acrylic wash like any other but it's not it's just full of thinner like a lacquer wash. So be super careful, my Warhammer guys, when you're using Acrox. Uh, it is just a really bad wash. I recommend using literally anything else from any other company on planet Earth. But for my D&D stuff, I don't have to worry about it doing that because the dry brushing breaks up a lot. I'm not using it to cover the whole miniature. I'm only using it to do a little bit here and there just to make things darker and more visually appealing. And so there he is. We're gonna wait for that to dry, but that is how I paint all of my D&D commissions. Last things I will do, but I won't do them on camera, is I paint the rest of the base black in case I get any overpaint. And then I will also gloss coat them using Tamiya TS-79 Semi-Gloss. But there he is. Hopefully that'll help you guys paint your D&D miniatures a little bit quicker for your campaigns. And gives you some more confidence in just doing it. The commissions I do um, are all quick like this. They are all sold for a little bit less than my Warhammer ones. And it's just because a lot of people have... A multitude of D, D miniatures for their campaigns that you're just not using because they are afraid of messing them up or not being able to paint them so hopefully this helps you and just like my marines this will be immediately available on my etsy shop right after this video so if you would like this miniature to check out the other ones i have available please check out the link in the description below and as always thank you so much for watching please give it a like or subscribe if you enjoy the content and as always comment below with any suggestions or ideas about this video or miniature techniques that you'd like to see. Thank you, and I will see you next time.